Greedy of filthy lucre. A very important study. Um, I did, a, did an experiment here uh, a little while ago, and I publicly challenged Robert Breaker and Gene Kim to show proof that they actually have reached the subscriber level that they have, and also to show what they're actually making from secular ad revenue. I knew that they weren't going to respond to it um, because they're both cowards and they both have something to hide. Um, they're both deceivers. They're both literally guilty of fraud. They are stealing money from ad, the companies that pay for ad revenue on YouTube. They are both criminal um, and they should be charged as, as such. I'll talk more about that later. But uh, I'm going to, going to show you the dictionary definition here for filthy lucre. This is the Oxford Dictionary. Filthy lucre, noun, money, especially when gained in a dishonest or dishonorable way. Um, having fake subscribers and, you know, basically fraudulently stealing money from secular companies uh, is not something that a man of God does. But um, these guys are basically putting out these videos and things and they're trying to get people to view them to make money. And you'll see both Gene Kim and Robert Breaker, they make clickbait titles to get that money to come in. They had their big ones, the big videos that get a million plus views or something like that. And then they try to name other videos similar to that and whatever to try to get that money coming in. What's the problem? Well, Matthew chapter 6 verse 24 says, No man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. Um, another shocking thing that I've seen with these cult followers of Robert Breaker and Gene Kim, a lot of very insulting things and very nasty and harsh and whatever else. Um, even when I show the absolute heresy that Robert Breaker was teaching that Jesus killed himself, totally against the scriptures. It's up for years and none of his followers ever found that because they're not actually, he's not, you know, preaching the true gospel. So these people are just lost. No real big shock there. But these guys have said heresy after heresy and their viewers just continue to follow them um, because they're false prophets is the whole thing. They're, they're con men. It's obvious. They're guilty of fraud and they don't care. There's no problem with that. But the problem is here, according to the words of Jesus Christ, what the Lord is saying is if you are serving mammon and trying to serve God at the same time in terms of if you're in ministry, obviously you can have a secular job. You have a secular job, you get secular income. There's no problem there, obviously. But if you're doing the Lord's work and you're getting paid by the secular world, you are serving mammon. And according to what the words of Jesus Christ, Matthew 6, 24, you can't serve God and mammon. And it's not just that you can't serve. If you're serving mammon in reality, you actually hate God, according to our text right here. Now, you better think about that. That's not the kind of guy that you should be watching. That's why I'm warning you. I'm warning you out of love. And I hope that some of the followers of Robert Breaker and Gene Kim will actually wake up. My job, and I'm going to be going through the scriptures today because you're obviously, they're obviously not instructing their people. They can't even recognize a false prophet. My job is to warn about false prophets and warn about false ministries and ministers of Satan. That's part of my job description as a preacher in the New Testament. I have to do that. If you don't want to hear that and whatever else, you just want to hear the normal messages, then please Go watch another one of the normal messages. I've put out quite a few of them over the years. Uh, I don't even know what the number's up to right now. Probably 1,800, maybe approaching 2,000 studies that are out there, both on Rumble and YouTube. There's plenty for you to watch. So don't get upset at me because I have to kick some false prophets. But that's part of my job description. That's what I have to do. So experiment number one that worked I knew that Robert Breaker and Gene Kim wouldn't have the guts or the character to actually come out and tell the truth. Show their silver play button and show the monetized page what they make a month. Uh, secular revenue for doing ministry. They wouldn't do that. Experiment number two, I thought, okay, if these guys are truly cult leaders, then what we'll have is we'll have some really nasty, vindictive comments coming from their supporters. Steven Anderson 
I did the same thing. I kicked Steven Anderson. All these nasty comments came. Um, there's been a number of false prophets that I've kicked over the years, and their followers come and attack me. They don't even think about what I'm saying or whatever else. Very indicative of a uh, false ministry. All right. Um, but let's look now at Titus 1, Titus chapter 1. Titus chapter 1, we're, we're going to see the thing here about filthy lucre. The qualifications for a real true bishop, a preacher, a man who's supposed to oversee the church of God. Titus chapter 1, beginning in verse 6. If any be blameless, the husband of one wife, having faithful children, not accused of riot or unruly, for a bishop must be blameless as the steward of God, not self-willed, not soon angry, not given to wine, no striker, not, not given to filthy lucre. That's a requirement. But a lover of hospitality, a lover of good men, sober, just, holy, temperate, holding fast the faithful word as he hath been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the, of the circumcision. Now look at this. Whose mouths must be stopped. That's a command. Who's going to stop their mouths? The real preachers. Who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. Look at all the blasphemous stuff that Gene Kim has come out with, his clickbait titles and things. Just bizarre, weird stuff and, and whatever. Why? Because his God is mammon. Look at the false prophecies of Robert Breaker. His God is mammon. And what do they do? They subvert whole houses for filthy lucre's sake. And the Bible says, you just leave them alone. Don't even talk about them. It's none of my business. I'll just go on and preach the word and try to win souls or something. It doesn't say that. It says, whose mouths must be stopped. I have a res responsibility to the body of Christ to fight against false ministries. Somebody's out there using a new version and some big Babel building someplace, effeminate looking guy with skinny jeans on. Well, you should be able to tell that that guy's false and just don't even waste time on him but you get some guy that comes in and oh i believe the king james bible and they say some good stuff now that enters into my realm of okay is he good i have to check into this guy oh he's bad he's preaching a false gospel he's preaching a bunch of other heresies saying jesus you know killed himself and things and you know paul was a date setter and jesus you know said no man knoweth the day or the hour and robert breaker says i do not concur you know I had the video out for years now showing the proof of that you know the the book of enoch is part of inspired scripture or whatever it's in it's in the bible it's mentioned in the bible he didn't say it's part of inspired scripture he said it's in mentioned in the bible uh in the book of jude uh no it isn't no it isn't um so i mean there's so many heresies gene kim comes out and he, and he says again i have the video to prove it uh quoted a verse from the Old Testament where they were talking about pagan gods, plural, and he says, there you go, that's the Trinity. <laughs> Anybody ever call him out on it besides me? You see? It's a problem. Why are they doing that stuff, though? Why have they inflated their numbers artificially for filthy lucre's sake? And I have a responsibility, and so do you, Christian, we need to start praying against these guys. And if you can find ways to report them and say, hey, I think that they've artificially inflated their numbers. They're false. It's fraud. They're stealing ad revenue money. That's a crime. You're not allowed, you're not allowed to do that on YouTube. I mean, I was on YouTube longer than both of these guys. And I know a lot of other YouTubers. It takes a long time to hit 100,000 subscribers, especially if you're a Bible-believing Christian. I mean, if you have even some really good secular channels out there and they do really professional work, really good stuff, really good information, and they're just over 100,000 subscribers. Some of them, you know, they hit 200,000 subscribers and they're saying, wow, this is great. This is amazing. And Gene Kim is 300 plus thousand. Robert Breaker is over 500,000 subscribers. Prove it. I don't believe either one of them. I think they're both deceivers and liars.
I mean, I mean, just look at the videos that they put out. That's clickbait. That's what they're doing. Trying to make money. They serve mammon, which means they hate God. That's what Jesus Christ said. It's not my opinion. It's not, well, Denlinger has such a rotten attitude. Jesus is the one that said you cannot serve God and mammon. I, I mean, I don't understand how people can't get this thing that taking money from filthy ads for preaching the word of God is a problem. I mean, why don't people understand that? And you, people, the, the followers, these lost followers of these two uh, sons of Belial there, these, these followers, they're defending it and saying it's perfectly fine to take ads from, you know, money from filthy ads. I mean, I, you know, I am radically pro-gun, and yet sometimes I click on a video and it comes up and the, the ad is, you know, they say it's, it depends on what you watch or whatever. These ads are coming up for anti-gun type of stuff. The Sandy Hook Action Center or whatever the thing. Stuff coming up for sodomite type of things and whatever else. Okay, yeah, that's real nice. Disgusting. And I would want money from those companies? Are you kidding me? I've sent donations back to people. Had false prophets and false ministries send me money. Stephen Anderson actually sent me money the one time, trying to get my email address. I realized, but I sent his money back. I didn't keep his money. Well, I'm going to use the devil's money for the Lord's work or something. That is so satanic. I mean, show me that in Scripture, where you can take the devil's money and turn it into the Lord's. Please show me that for doing the Lord's work, I'm saying. You know, and well, you can do the, you know, so if you're a plumber, then you can't take, you know, you only have to work for saved people. You get these arguments. And I just think, why are you making these arguments? Because that, that's right, because you have a God, and your God is your false teacher. And you have to defend him at all costs. Galatians chapter 2. Turn to Galatians chapter 2. See, if you're a real man of God, if you're truly saved, then you don't have to fear anything. Great peace of they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. You can't be offended by what I'm saying. You can't be. If you're genuinely born again, you should say, well, you know, hey, I'll listen to this guy's words here. And if he doesn't prove his point, well, then fine, whatever. If he proves his point, well, then I need to change. That's the standard that a real Christian takes. Not just, you know, I'm going to write some nasty little comment. Galatians chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. And that because of false brethren, unawares brought in, who came in privily to spy out our liberty which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage, to whom we gave place by subjection, no, not for an hour, that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. Kicked them out. Hey, you, you, get out. Oh, that well, maybe they would have gotten saved and maybe they're actually brothers even though they preach a false gospel. Huh? I get that all the time. Well, gee, why would you attack your brethren? They're not my brothers. They preach a totally different gospel than I do. I've preached unknown, how many times, preached the gospel and Robert Breaker, he'll do a study, you know, a week or two later, whatever, trying to refute what I've said. But he's my brother in Christ. I tell people, call upon the name of the Lord to be saved. Oh, no one's ever been saved by calling upon the Lord. You had just to just take it, you know, steal salvation and believe it in your mind and you're good. Acts chapter 20. You know, and for you people out there that get upset at me when I expose false prophets. Well, you shouldn't do that, Brian. You shouldn't do this. Um, do you realize what happens if I don't? Who's going to stop them? You say the Lord. Okay, um, when does he do that? The Lord's just going to drop these people dead? Well, he does eventually, but you know, he doesn't depend on us. He doesn't expect me to stop these guys? To speak against them? It's, it's just so bizarre. It really is. You know, well, brother, just keep on preaching the gospel. It'll all work out. Um, well, again, I've seen that thing happen where I just keep preaching the gospel and these guys, these false prophets just keep coming along and stealing people away from the ministry and pulling people over and getting them all messed up. I, I just, I don't understand how Christians can defend false ministries and seeing 
people being destroyed spiritually and say, well, you know, it just all kind of works out. Acts chapter 20, verse 28, if you want some more scripture on the thing of why I am supposed to expose false prophets, take heed thereunto, or excuse me, take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God, which I have done over the years, which he hath purchased with his own blood. I feed the church of God. I don't feed secular algorithms. I don't feed secular companies. I have never received one cent from any secular company, and I never will. Ever. Send me, hey, you want to you wanna make a point here? Prove a point? YouTube, send me a check for all the ad revenue that you put your ads on my videos after I said, please don't do that. And for a while, I fought it when I was still able to, and then they just kind of came out with their new standards and said, well, you sorry, you can't fight it. We're putting ads on whatever we want. All the money that you've taken from this ministry over the years, or whatever, not taken from the ministry that you've, however you would want to say that, send me a check for it and I will burn it publicly on video. Go ahead. Thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars, a hundred thousand dollars, whatever it would send me a check for a hundred thousand dollars, I will publicly burn it. You're not going to see me go, well, you know, uh, well, I, I, uh, um, I think that, you know, since in this case, there will be no excuses for it. You want to put me to the test? You followers of Breaker and Kim out there? Okay, get a secular company to send me a check, certified mail to make sure I got it, and watch what I do with it. And if I cash it, and the, that secular company says, hey, he cashed it, and it was definitely him, his you know, name and everything else, then you can come out and you can expose me. Put me to the test, I dare you. Send me a secular check from a secular company that goes against this King James Bible and I will publicly burn it. I will burn it live. There's an offer for you. I'll burn it on a live stream. I wonder if Gene, Kim, and Robert Breaker would do that. Verse 29, For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. That's what these guys are. They're grievous wolves. They enter in and they don't spare the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. Funny because both Gene and Kim and Robert Breaker showed up after me on YouTube. And like I said, where were they at? I didn't even know who these guys were. Never even heard of them. All the big group of King James Bible believing guys never heard of Gene Kimber Robert Breaker before 2015. Therefore, watch and remember that by the space of three years I ceased not to warn everyone night and day with tears, which I've tried to do. I try to warn people about false ministries. It bothers me. You know. I mean, I've had friends in the ministry, they were, they're with me for years and years, and all of a sudden they just disappear. They don't all just come out and, you know, attack me or whatever else. A lot of them, they just disappear. And I think, I wonder whatever happened to brother so-and-so and sister so-and-so. I wonder whatever happened. And I go to some false prophet out there. Oh, there they are in the comments. And I think, oh, no. Didn't you listen to me? And a lot of these people, by the way, they were all into the nice doctrinal stuff that I do, but I didn't warn about certain false ministries out there, and those are the ones that pick those people off. They go after the weak sheep. I've seen it over and over again. So this, this whole thing of, Brother Brian, just preach the word, just preach the gospel, it'll all work out. I'd be disobeying scripture if I just did that. If I didn't warn about the wolves out there in sheep's clothing, if I didn't warn about the false ministries, it would destroy more and more people. Next, let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 3. We'll look at the qualifications for a bishop here, which Peter Ruckman said that, uh, yeah, just kind of get as close as you can to that. You know, can't blame the Baptist for not following it exactly, Amen. I can. That's why I'm not going to a Baptist church ever again. 
Baptist churches are filled with some of the worst perverts, some of the worst con artists. Yeah, you'll find good people occasionally and things like that. Sure, absolutely. I'm not going to say they're all just evil and corrupt that's ever been in a Baptist church. I used to go to Baptist churches. I preached in Baptist pulpits and whatever else. Um, but uh, evil people, well, there's some real good ones in those places, and I don't mean good. Let's look here at the qualifications, not just for a bishop, but also for the deacon. Look at this. This is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach, not given to wine, no striker, not greedy of filthy lucre. There it is again. Money through dishonest gain, dishonest means. But patient, not a brawler, not covetous. I'll just say this too, by the way. Money that's derived through dishonest means. Okay. I asked Robert Breaker and Gene Kim to be honest. I said, could you please show proof that you've actually gotten that many subscribers? Show the proof. Show what you make. Why are you hiding it? Because you're a, I don't know, dishonest? One that ruleth well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. Mammon. They're serving mammon. That's what they're doing. Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without, lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. Think about that. Let me see the good report of them which are without. Let me see the proof from YouTube that you've actually gotten that many real subscribers. Let's see it. Show the proof. I don't believe that you have it. Robert Breaker and Gene Kim, you don't have it. You know that you don't have it. You know that you've lied. You know that you are guilty of fraud. You're dishonest. And right now you are in the snare, you are in the snare of the devil. Don't tell me that you're not. Verse 8. Likewise must the deacons be grave, not double-tongued, not given too much wine, not greedy of filthy lucre. I mean, I don't get it. Again, you know, I mean, dictionary definition, these guys are greedy of filthy lucre. The ads that are put on YouTube are filthy. And you get money from the filthy ads. I mean, how could it be anything but filthy lucre? And if you are inflating your subscriber count to make more ad revenue money, then it's by dishonest means. It's filthy lucre. That's why I've rejected it all these years. I could have taken ad revenue. I could have said, hey, I'll, you know, I'll just kind of, and all the other excuses, but I never did. I mean, it just blows my mind. Verse 9, holding the mystery of the faith in a pure conscience, and let these also first be proved, then let them use the office of a deacon, being found blameless. Even so must their wives be grave, not slanderers, sober, faithful in all things. Let the deacons be the husbands of one wife, ruling their children and their own house as well. For they that have used the office of a deacon, well, purchased to themselves a good degree and great boldness in the faith which is in Christ Jesus. Pretty, uh, Amazing things there. First Timothy chapter 5. Turn over there. First Timothy chapter 5. The scriptures are talking here in verse, if you go to verse 17, let the older elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. All right? In other words, the double honor doesn't mean secular ad revenue and you know donations from the body of Christ. It's not what double honor means. Double honor means that you honor them with your mouth and also with your money. That's what it means. All right. How do you know? Verse 18. For the scripture saith, Thou shalt not muzzle the ox that treadeth out the corn, and the laborer is worthy of his reward. If some guy's laboring in the word and doctrine. You say, hey, you're really putting in a lot of hours here, answering people's emails, writing back and forth with people, um, really doing the work of the Lord. I'm going to give you some money towards that so that you can continue. I, if I, oh, Brian, nothing or go out and get a job. Well, if I got a job, there's not enough time for the ministry. If I was working 40 hours a week at a secular job, go back to my secular income that I used to make, 
Um, if I was doing that, I wouldn't have time to be doing videos and answering people's emails and answering letters and answering all the other stuff that I do. There are people that have been helped greatly from this ministry and they say, we'd like to keep you going in that. And you know something? I have to say this too. I see that as a great and terrible thing. Using the Bible word terrible. It's something that I fear and I think it's a terror to fall into the hands of the living God kind of a thing. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord we persuade men. I get donations from the body of Christ. And I'll get donations of sometimes a couple dollar bills in an envelope. You know, just looking, I just put all my letters over into this. I had to start a second tote now. Um, a big, huge tote. I haven't filled up and I had to start a second one. I'll get people, some guy mowing yards for a living and he sends me, you know, $12 or something. And here's a, an older woman. I'm sorry I'm on a fixed income, but the Lord's blessed me so much through your ministry. And here's, it's all I have. I have $7 or here's, here's this or here's that. I've gotten coins before. And I don't mean silver coins. Some people have sent me those, and, and that's great. Praise the Lord for that. I really appreciate that. But just a couple coins. I've gotten that stuff. And you know what? I take every penny seriously. That's why we live the way that we do. We live as simple and cheap as we can. Because I realize I'm going to stand before God someday. And if I'm just being frivolous and stupid, you know, I mean, we don't even go out to eat. You know, I mean, a lot of things that people normally do, I just say, no, we're not doing that because I fear God. I fear God greatly. And I know it costs people something to send me money because they've been blessed by this ministry. And for me to just take that and just squander that and just, well, I'll just throw it here and throw it there. I fear God. I would not do that. I take it very serious. And to think I'm going to take money from sodomites and papists and you know anti-gunners and all the other wicked horrible people that advertise on youtube and i want money from them not on your life i mean and again what would you people think what would you say about me if it came out that all of a sudden i you know some video comes on and i say Hello, and welcome to King James Video Ministries. This video, this sermon, this week's sermon is sponsored by uh, Patton Lodge number 362. The Freemasons have been around for a long time, and we would like to encourage you to join. And I did something, you know, this video is sponsored by the Freemasons. How many people would call me out for that? And rightfully so. But yet you can take money from the lost world for preaching, and that, well, that's fine. It's just, you know, that, there's no problem with that. If you believe that, if you don't understand the basics of Scripture in this area, then you're lost. I can tell you that. You are not born again. It's just that simple. A preacher taking money from the lost world. And this is what you're teaching people, Gene Kim and Robert Breaker. They're so anemic in the Scriptures that they don't even understand that that's wrong. Woe be to you. Continuing, 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 19. Against an elder receive not an accusation, but before two or three witnesses. I'm accusing. I'm another elder. Them that sin rebuke before all that others also may fear. Greedy of filthy lucre, whose mouths must be stopped. That's what I'm doing. Them that sin rebuke before all. Robert Breaker, the Lord Jesus Christ rebuke you. Gene Kim, the Lord Jesus Christ rebuke you. Hey, you show the proof that you actually have as many subscribers as you do. You show your silver play button or whatever letter from YouTube saying, hey, congratulations, you really worked hard and whatever else. You show the proof and you show what you make a month to your viewers out there. Hey, they're for your ad monetization and everything else. They're, they're, they're for you getting that ad revenue. So what are you afraid of? Why don't you want to show your ad revenue, your monthly ad revenue? Your supporters are for it. <laughs> Doesn't even make any sense. It's not even logical. You're hiding it. Even though your supporters are supposedly okay with it. Think about that. The Lord rebuke you both. You had the opportunity to come forward and be honest. You didn't take it. Your destruction is coming. Both of you. You're frauds. You're fake. 
Genesis chapter 14. Here's the single greatest passage on why you don't take money from the lost. How about taking money from the king of Sodom? Hmm. Would that be a problem? Hey, there's a gay pride rally out here today, and they're sponsoring this week's video. Well, praise the Lord, Brother Brian. You're getting some good sponsor money now. Yeah, hey, for this sermon, this week's sermon, uh, I'm just going to put up the gay pride pla flag here behind me. And just say, thank. I'd like to thank our sponsors for this week's sermon. The Gay Pride Rally here. Of the, that would be wrong, but ad revenue from wicked ads that are pro-sodomite, that's okay. Yeah. Genesis 14, verse 21 through 23. And the king of Sodom said unto Abram, Give me the persons and take the goods to thyself. Here, I'm going to give you some money. After Abram did all the work, by the way, of fighting and whatever else, and the king of Sodom says, Oh, hey, I'd like to give you some blessings here. What does Abram, Abram say? Verse 22, And Abram said to the king of Sodom, I have lift up mine hand unto the Lord, the Most High God, the possessor of heaven and earth, that I will not take from a thread even to a shoe latchet, and that I will not take anything that is thine, lest thou shouldest say, I have made Abram rich. How about that? Hey, Robert Breaker, Gene Kim, are you getting money from YouTube? Then YouTube is the one supporting you and your followers that are okay with it. That's a problem. Now let's go to 1 Peter chapter 5. So I'm giving you the scriptures. There's no way to get out of this thing. Unless you're lost. You know, if you're truly looking for the truth and you're saying, yeah, I was really falling for some of this stuff. You know, again, please understand out there the followers. If you're a follower of Robert Breaker or Gene Kim, this is where they get their information from, from Peter Ruckman. They just took his information and they're bringing it out as their own. See, they had a problem at Bible Baptist Bookstore back when Peter Ruckman was still alive. The tapes and everything that, that, that he did, cassette tapes, you know, if you're young, you probably you might have to Google that. <laughs> um but all the, the VHS tapes and cassette tapes at first, you know, Google that too. Um, and then it later became DVDs and it became, you know, I mean, the Drawing Men to Christ videos. I have a bunch of them sitting over there in a box. I need to get them situated here. Um, not in this, because, but anyhow, uh, all that stuff. And people were making copies of it. And at first it was, hey, okay, whatever. And then this online stuff came up and people started putting a whole bunch of stuff out there and Bible Baptist Bookstore said, hey, we don't want that. Okay, this is stuff that Peter Ruckman did. This is his income and, and whatever, and not to mention the fact people are cutting these videos up and making them look really bad and it's, it's not good. Sorry, we can't just give free permission to put it out there. Now, there are a few channels on YouTube that do get permission to put Ruckman's material out there. Fine, great. But see, the little slick game that Robert Breaker and Gene Kim did is they came along, they went to Ruckman's school, they've studied Ruckman's material, and then they just bring it out as their own. Oh, look at this. I have this shocking revelations. Oh, look at this amazing passage of scripture that nobody online is teaching you. And oh, look at the... They're taking the glory from a man who did the hard work. See, I could just go to any of these commentaries here and I can flip it open and, oh, there's a real blessing. I can do a video on that. That's what they're doing. So understand, if you're one of the, the viewers and you're young, you're being deceived by these two guys. Right? Both of them are doing things contrary to what Peter Ruckman actually taught. Both of them are. Uh, Robert Breaker openly goes against the gospel that Peter Ruckman preached. There are so many you know, video clips and things and audio recordings of Peter Ruckman going to Romans chapter 10, telling somebody how to get saved. Uh, it's right there. And Breaker tries, oh no, he just had faith in the blood. Faith in the blood, faith in the blood. Don't call upon the name of the Lord to be saved. Call means something other than call. Call is something that you don't do with your mouth. Okay? How's that work when you go up to the drive through at Kentucky Fried Chicken there, Breaker? And he's made videos defending it, you know. And again, I'm a natural health guy, you know. I used to go to junk food places all the time. So I can speak from experience. It's poisonous, it's toxic. It was killing me, and Lord got me out of that whole thing. 
Um, but Breakers defended it. So uh, he's not, not a guy you want to follow. Uh, first, first Peter chapter 5, verses 1 through 6. We'll look here again at the thing of filthy lucre. The elders which are among you I exhort, who am also an elder, and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be, shall be revealed. Now, a lot of that's true about me. I've been in pulpits. I'm not just a YouTube dude or whatever else. I have preached. I had hands laid up on me from different Baptist churches and things where they would pray and, and things. If you want to call that ordination or whatever, okay, fine. I've been, I've preached on the street. I've gone door to door. I've passed out tracts. I've done all the different stuff that qualified me as a good Baptist. Okay. I filled in for the pastor while he was away on vacation. I did all that stuff, answered people's phone calls and, you know, counseled people. I've done all it, all that. Taught adult Sunday school, taught children's Sunday school, taught bus ministry. I did all those things. So I am an elder, whether you like me or not. I'm not a witness of the sufferings of Christ in person. I'm also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Well, I am that. I am born again. Again, in spite of some of your beliefs. Number two, verse two, in other words. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind. Not for filthy lucre. <laughs> it's willingly. It's, it's out of charity. You know, Paul wrote about, you know, about uh, I will gladly, you know, basically give myself and, and you know, uh, all the things that Paul went through. Uh, no certain dwelling place. I mean, we are on our 10th year of marriage right now, my wife and I, and we have yet to own our own home. <laughs> and uh, we've lived in some pretty bad places, you know. So, I mean, th thank Lord we have a property and things, certainly, we have a little dinky tiny home on the thing. Great, wonderful. But we sacrifice. We, we do. This place here isn't ours. This is the Lord's. This belongs to the Lord. Um, this is where we do videos. So, and that's why I get irritated. Because I know what it takes to be a real man of God. I know what it takes to have a real ministry. And I'm not just talking about myself. I've known pastors, and I've seen how they suffer. And I've known other preachers on YouTube that have tried to put st stuff out. They don't get hundreds of thousands of subscribers. Then they don't certainly don't make ad revenue. Verse 3, Neither is being lords over God's heritage, but being in samples to the flock. How about that for you followers of Robert Breaker and Gene Kim? Are you going to start coming out and getting monetized videos and things like that. Why don't you try it? Why don't you try it and see how fast your channel grows naturally? Some of you guys out there, oh, you know the Bible so well and everything else because you follow Gene Kim and Robert Breaker. Okay, get your own channel. You have to hit, I think, a thousand subscribers to start monetizing. Get a thousand subscribers and show that you too can get up to their level through just preaching and accepting ad revenue. Prove it. Think about these things. See, you're going to stand before Jesus Christ one day. And if you've followed a false, <clears throat> false prophet all your life, that's a problem. That's a big problem. You can get mad at me. You can hate me. You don't have to believe in Brian Denlinger to be saved or Brian Denlinger in order to go to heaven. Cuss me. Curse me. I, whatever you want to do. Uh, print out pictures of my face and shoot it with a gun or something. I don't care. You can hate my guts. It doesn't matter. But you better make sure that you're right with Jesus Christ. And you better make sure that you're in line with this King James Bible. And this King James Bible never says that you can take money from the lost world to preach the gospel. And to preach the word of God. You show me it. All you guys out there. That's my challenge. Another challenge to you there. Show me scripture where anybody ever did the work of the Lord and got paid by the secular world. Show it to me. You can't. Verse 4. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud, and giveth grace to the humble. How do you like that there, Gene Kim? Mr. Uh, this is the best sermon ever, that you know, best sermon on the pre-trib rapture that you'll ever hear. And it, God resists you. 
you hater of God. Lover of mammon, that makes you a hater of God. And God is resisting you because of your pride. And neither one of you, Breaker or Kim, neither, neither one of you can humble yourself enough to come down and say, hey, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll show the truth here or whatever else. You know what? I have been doing wrong. I have had people come in and artificially inflate my numbers. They've paid for it and whatever else. It's been dishonest and I need to get it down to actually what my real subscriber count is. If they come down and they, if, if you do that and your subscriber count's still, you know, bigger than mine, I'll say, well, at least you got that right. I'm not going to say, oh, well, you know, it's still too much. It has to be below me or something. That's not the point of this. It's not the point of this at all. If you don't understand that, God help you. But look at verse 6. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that He may exalt you in due time. God is supposed to exalt you in due time. He is the one that's supposed to grow your ministry. And if you're doing it through mammon, if you're doing it and you say, I'm going to go join the Freemasons so that I can get into bigger places and speak at better things and whatever else, hey, you know, I'm just going to take it a little bit easier on the Catholics and there's some guys here that, you know, secular businessmen that want to kind of, you know, pad my wallet a little bit, if you know what I mean there, and, and we'll get into the better places and think. No. No. Let God exalt you in due time. I've said this before in other studies, and I'll repeat it one more time, just for sake of repeating it. Um, my prayer for many years was that I could do my duty for the Lord and then leave. I thought, hey, this will just be a kind of a temporarily temporary little sideline and I can get back to wood turning and logging and tree work and things like that, which I actually like. And I don't have people attacking me and just making fun of me all the time when I'm doing that work. Um, I was getting into better and better art galleries all over the country. I shouldn't, can't say world, but it would have gotten to that. Um, meeting with the head of the wood turning center in Philadelphia and Albert Lakoff was his name. And he said, your work is technically excellent, but you need to come up with something that's uniquely yours. All these different things. My art was in a uh, gallery in uh, Seattle, Washington. It was in Bethesda, Maryland. I had stuff up and down the East Coast, uh, really going places. I was invited to a big art show at the Philadelphia National or, uh, Convention Center. Huge, you know, thousands of artists there and everything else. I came in as a visiting artist, um, talking with the staff there and everything else. They had special staff that kind of help you and to grow and whatever else. And they said, you know, we'd like to have you do a stand here and, and things. Your work is excellent. I was in the uh, Lancaster County Master Guild of Master Craftsmen, and I thought, hey, I can, you know, the Lord saved me, and I just started studying the, the Bible like crazy, and I thought, well, you know, going to these Baptist churches, and they're not saying anything about these different issues, and they're really kind of cowardly about the Bible version issue, and I'm seeing this weird stuff, and I'm thinking, huh, you know, well, maybe I'll just make a video or something, and I'll get that out there on DVD, and, and, um, I don't know, what should I call my ministry? Oh, King James Video Ministries. Oh, yeah, that's good. And so I did that in 2007, made my first DVD, and then I got on YouTube in 2008. Um, and I thought, well, I'll just put out a few videos, and oh, some more questions came in and a few videos more. And I, I kept hoping that the Lord would say, okay, you're done. Thank you for your service there, young man. You know, you can go on back. You did your little tour of duty, and you get to go back to the secular world again. A lot less stressful. Uh, no, he just keeps it going and going. And you go back through my old videos and it's, oh, I don't know how much longer I'll be on YouTube. I think that they're going to shut me down and whatever. <laughs> and here I am, 2022, you know, 2008 to 2022. Was that 14 years or whatever, you know? It's incredible. Lord's not letting me out yet. What's he done? He's exalted me in due time. When early on, by the way, when I first got into the King James Video Ministries, I had DVDs that I was selling. There was a brother over in Australia, and he said, hey, he said, brother, I'd like to donate to you. I said, no. No, I don't feel right about that. No, I just, you know, you bought my DVD. Thank you. You know, appreciate that. No, I don't want to take donations. He said, brother, I have been very blessed by your ministry, and I want to receive some rewards for helping you out. When I hit the judgment seat of Christ, I can't do what you do. Take some donations from brethren that believe in what you're doing. Because we want to, to you know, have some of the 
fruit that comes from this ministry. You're doing some great work. And he you know, gave me some scriptures and things, and I thought, all right. And I went and I got a PayPal donation thing. But, you know, there were the whole times, it was a month or more, there was not a donation that came in. And I was doing tree work, and I was doing other stuff here and there. That was during my studies, and then when I started actually coming out with videos and things, that was a whole other issue, but um, it's rough to serve the Lord. But if you humble yourself, hey, Lord, I'm willing to live in some little shack. My wife and I lived uh, for about uh, uh, maybe four or five months in my old wood shop at my parents' property, 16 foot by 16 foot. We humbled ourselves. Moved to northern Maine in uh, January. <laughs> a couple feet of snow out there. Sub-zero temperatures. No heat in our house that we were able to afford, which wasn't even our house. It was for the ministry, by the way. We had bought some land that we were going to build on, and we thought, well, what do we do? Wait till spring? No, I think we should just move up. Move the ministry up to northern Maine, along with where we were going to build. The whole story there. And we were in that thing. No heat except for a little space heater in our bedroom down in the kitchen, 18 degrees Fahrenheit, you know, cooking uh, things, potatoes. We ate potatoes and onions for just about every meal. Yeah, I know what it's like. I know what it's like to humble myself so that I can serve the Lord, so that I can serve the body of Christ. I know what it's like. So don't tell me, you know, I mean, you get some guy, you get the guys in the military. How does it make you feel when you just... Bust your butt and you're out there blood, sweat, and tears literally shedding your blood on the battlefield and you get some purple heart or some kind of a commendation like that and then you see some guy that's got rich parents and they give him a medal and he didn't do anything to deserve it. How does it make you feel? Do you look at that guy and say, hey, you know, let me salute you. You look at that guy and say, I'd rather, you know, get rid of this guy. What a jerk. First Timothy chapter six. I mean, is this really the, the kind of testimony that we want as Bible believers? Yeah, we have guys within our midst, you know, they're King James Bible believers, real Bible believers, you know, Gene Kim there. Um, they're the real deal. These guys are real. They're, they're something else. What's going to happen when YouTube finally catches these guys? They could put it on mainstream media. Two channels on, on YouTube were recently caught for fraud. They were actually stealing from, you know, stealing ad revenue money, and they are what's part of the King James only movement. What does that do to the rest of us if we don't speak out? You better think about that. First Timothy chapter six, verse nine. But they that will be rich. Why are you taking the ad revenue? Fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. You see, you can scam your viewers. You can scam people that know you in person. But you can't scam God. God knows what you're doing, Robert Breaker, Gene Kim. He knows what you're doing. He sees what you're doing. He sees that you're taking money from the lost world to preach his word. And let's just say for a second that you're saved. I don't believe either one of you are. But let's just say for a second that you're both saved. You're answering to God for what you've done. You will answer. But thou, O man of God, flee these things. Knock, knock. Oh, who's there? Here's the men of the town, the local lodge. We actually do have a Masonic lodge in town. I showed it in one of my videos. We're here from the local lodge. We're glad for the work that you do. Here's a check for $20,000. Oh, thank you. I'm going to burn this on video. Flee those things. Not, 
Well, you know, it, it, it depends on how you look at it. I mean, this money, you know, could really go to help us get things and whatever else. No. No. I remember D.L. Moody said the one time they asked him what he thought about Freemasons, and he said, I'm never going to be one. I don't want anything to do with them. And he said, if I had to preach, I'd forget the exact quote, but something like, if I had to preach to only 10 people, I would rather do that than preach to thousands with the Masons backing me. See, a lot of the preachers back in his day, like Sam Jones and Billy Sunday, they were Freemasons. And D.L. Moody knew it. And he wasn't for what that whole thing was about. And God exalted him in due time, didn't he? But you get Billy Sunday and Sam Jones. It wasn't God that was exalting those men. It was the devil through their Freemasonic connections. But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, patience. I can't wait to get my channel up to where it's highly exalted and whatever else and I'm a big shot. Then you don't have patience. Meekness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life whereunto thou art also called and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. You know what I'm doing right now, brethren? I'm not trying to brag. I'm not trying to pat myself on the back. Lord knows my spirit in saying this. But I'm trying to profess a good profession before many witnesses. I am open and I am honest about the way we live. I'm not hiding anything. No ad revenue. How much money do we make? We don't make much. I am not going to share the exact amount and whatever else because it's up to the body of Christ. They're sending its tithe money. I operate 100% on the money that I get from the body of Christ for this ministry. Uh, if I make side money, secular money to be able to buy, you know, I've bought and sold vehicles and things on the side, fix vehicles up and whatever else. Um, yeah, I do that, but not a whole lot. Um, and a lot of times I've lost money on that. So it's not a matter of, I'm just making huge amounts of money. We're not rich. And, you know, please, I'm just going to say this. Don't anybody send us a check in the mail or donation and say, please take your wife and your son out to eat. We will never do it. We will never do it. Send me $500 and say, take your wife to a good restaurant. I will not do it in good conscience because I know that there are viewers of mine who are struggling monetarily and I am not going to go out to eat. Not to mention the fact that I don't trust restaurants. So... <laughs> Uh, that would also be an insult if you told me that I have to go out to eat. Um, I worked at restaurants. I know the kind of filthy practices that they do. Um, it's not happening. Um, why don't you go on vacation? Go, go to some other country or whatever else. Uh, well, even before all the new restrictions and everything else, I wouldn't have gone to another country. We don't take very many vacations. We might take a day off or something like that, but typically we work pretty much seven days a week. We might take some time off on a Sunday or whatever else just to kind of enjoy ourselves and, you know, take a walk, uh, ride bicycles or something like that, or maybe go canoeing or kayaking or whatever. We might do that, but then a lot of times I'm out there and I'm thinking, hey, that'd be a good place to film a video over there. Or, you know, hey, while we're out here doing this, maybe I'll just go off and film a video. It takes sacrifice to preach the Word of God. Major sacrifice. So uh, do I get a little bit hot when I see these guys like Breaker and Kim and they're just fraudulently ripping people off? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. And I'm going to start praying very fervently and I hope that you do out there as well, that God stops their mouths whose mouths must be stopped. Let's not let them subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. We don't need that in the Bible-believing movement. We need to be very strong in our standards. You read back in the book of Acts, Ananias and Sapphira, and they come in and they lie to the Holy Ghost, and they lie to all the Christians that are there, and Peter rebukes them, and they both go, and they drop down dead. And it said that the people magnified them, but no man durst join himself to them. <laughs> the people should magnify us. The lost world should know that we are different. They should look and they should say, those people have character. They shouldn't look and say, look at this. 
Robert Breaker, half a million subscribers? Oh, please, give me a break. And isn't it weird, too, if you look at the number of views I get on most of my videos, they're not that far below Gene Kim and Robert Breaker on many of my studies? Isn't that weird? With YouTube suppressing a lot of my videos, they've deleted so many videos of mine over the years, I've lost count. You know, that's why I brought out the too controversial for YouTube thing. I mean, literally, because a lot of the videos on there are, were too controversial and they got kicked off of YouTube. But God keeps me on there. God says, oh, you know, you're not done yet. Keep preaching. More people have questions and they need answers and things. Okay. Yes, sir. You know. But uh, just a few points here to finish up. I wrote a couple points. Um, Breaker and Kim both admit to monetization. They do. They are both monetized. That's not me just slandering them. And what do you really know for sure? I'll show you. This is from Gene Kim. Uh, on their channel. I'll show you the thing here where he openly admits that, oh, since they're putting ads on, we might as well just take the money and, you know, use it for the Lord, you know, and everything. So there you go. There's that. Um, Robert Breaker, I know he has admitted to it in different videos and things. So they both admitted to it. And, and if you don't believe me, you say, oh, I don't, you know, okay, you've proved Gene Kim, but I don't know about Robert Breaker. Ask him. Ask him. Point number two, which I've already addressed, but I'll say it again. YouTube ads are filthy. They're disgusting. I mean, it wouldn't be right to be sponsored by Walmart or some kind of a thing like that or Fisher Price Toys or whatever. It's still secular money for doing the Lord's work, which is sin. Uh, I showed you the scriptures. Okay. Um, I mean, and again, challenge out there to anybody. Please show me scriptures that says that we can take secular money for doing the Lord's work. As in preaching. Okay, show it to me. Number three, both are guilty of fraud. They are fraudulent in what they're doing. Coming out and saying, I have this couple hundred thousand subscribers, pay me more ad revenue. That's fraud. That's dishonest gain. And quite frankly, they should both be criminally charged for that. They should both be in trouble. They should not only have their channels deleted, but they should also have to pay that money back that they have fraudulently, fraudulently stolen from the secular companies that put their pay to have their ads run. Um, and again, I can show something else here. Show another little uh, screenshot here. I had a, one of the viewers of my channel brought up this point and he said, not only are these guys taking secular ad revenue, they're also taking donations. That's two different streams of income for doing the Lord's work. One from the devil and one from supposed Christians. How does that work? Here's the proof. Here's Gene Kim. You can see the donation thing there on his main channel page. And here's Robert Breaker. If you go to his website, you can see there's a donation. Think about that. How do you take money from the devil and from professing Christians and say that that's legitimate? I mean, the whole concept of doing God's work is supposed to be the Lord places it on your heart to give to a ministry that you say, this ministry has been a blessing to me. I've learned so much from this guy. So the Lord has put it in my mind. I want to give back to that. I want to help keep that ministry going so that the fruit that that ministry bears, I'm going to have rewards at the judgment seat of Christ based on that fruit. That's the whole point of giving, New Testament giving. You look for a good ministry that's bearing a lot of fruit and you say, let me help you out. Let me keep you going because I want rewards at the judgment seat of Christ for this. How does that work with secular ad revenue? <laughs> Do the secular companies say, hey, we really appreciate this guy's preaching for the Lord. Let's give him money. You know, there's no just justification for it, brethren. None at all. I'm sorry my speech has been a little bit but I'm just, I'm really ticked off right now. It's not right. Um, I've had a lot of guys on here. I said this in my other video the one time. Um, a lot of the old channels that were around and, and things, look at their subscribers. You know, again, cross me out. I'm a nobody. I'm nothing. I hate Brian Nellinger. Good for you. Now go find another King James only type of ministry. A guy that uses the King James Bible alone and show me. 
show me these levels of subscribers where it's hundreds of thousands of subscribers. Show me one. So that's going to be it for this study. Um, I have to do some of this stuff, brethren. I'm required. It's a requirement of a preacher. I have to come out and to whom we gave place by subjection, no, not for an hour. False brethren brought in unawares. Kick them out. Expose them. I have to do it by name, and I will do it by name, which Breaker and Kim are too cowardly to name me, by the way. That's funny. Another mark of a false prophet is they don't name names. You have to watch out for that one. Okay? Why? Because they're dishonest. They're dishonest in their gain. They're dishonest in their preaching. They're scared to death of truth. So, we will see people, you in future studies. Let's, let's pray about this. If you can find ways that you can contact YouTube and say, hey, take these guys down um, or check into them. Did they actually have that many subscribers? Do it. I think that, that would be a great thing. Um, I'm a Christian. I find what they're doing to be very repulsive. Uh, they're fraudulently stealing ad revenue money. Um, I think it's wrong. Um, and if you, if anybody out there knows any heretical things that Breaker and Gene Kim have said, send me the, put the links in the comment section down there. Um, certainly do that. And I'll make videos exposing them because they need to be exposed. Their mouths must be stopped. Not, not mouths should be stopped or can be if you can. Their mouths must be stopped. That's my job. And that's your job too, by the way. As Christians, we have to stand against these guys and say, they're fake. They're frauds. So we will see everybody in upcoming videos. Thank you very much for watching. Let's pray about this.